revelation of who he is. As we often say, St. John 4, 24, the Bible said God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I thank the Lord this morning I'm worshiping him in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> I can read what I believe. I don't have no doubt about what I'm doing. Yeah. Holiness is right. Amen. It doesn't matter what you know how popular uh, or how unpopular it get. It's still right. Yeah. You know I tell y'all often popularity is not a referendum for righteousness. <clears throat> We'd like to invite your attention to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians the second chapter of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll begin reading at verse number 8. We'll add a few other scriptures to this as the Spirit permit. Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, and begin reading at verse 8. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2 and then verse 8 and the word of God says for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves but it is the gift of God <clears throat> grace um, if I were to give a 50 cent definition of grace it simply it would be uh, unmerited favor or undeserved favor and we are saved but by the grace of God God in his infinite wisdom uh, sent a savior sent Jesus Christ to atone for the sins of the world and all we have to do is to look to him and, and receive him and obey his gospel. And, and, and some people will tend to uh, think that uh, the changes that they made uh, is their salvation. And you have to be careful with that because especially when you, if you, uh, after you've been in this thing for a while, uh, if you're not careful, you can start to get arrogant. And to think that it is your righteousness that saves you. But we're saved only through and by the shed blood of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. Nothing we have done, nothing we could do could save us. For the Bible said the wages of sin is death. The, the, the payment or the compensation of sin is death. All of us were worthy of death. You know, uh, uh, even uh, in our best day, mm -hmm. we're not good enough for the Lord. God is holy, yeah. and only holiness can stand in his sight. So we are made right, we are made holy through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. So, so we, we have to fight the temptation to think that it's something to us. Because there is nothing to us now. I mean, I, it's a good thing that you stop doing, you know, whatever it was that you were doing. It's good that you don't drink anymore. It's good that you don't smoke anymore. It's good that you don't sleep around anymore and, and, and all of that stuff. But that alone, that in and of itself does not save you now. There's no salvation in any of that. Uh, there are plenty of folks who have high moral uh, value systems. Yes. But they're not saved. Amen. Uh, you, you take I, I, the Muslim brethren. Those are some high moral people. And I mean, their women, you, there's nobody can say anything about their modesty. They dress modest now. And uh, they're, uh, as, a, as a whole, they're moral people. But unless and until they accept and have faith in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary, they're not saved. And when you accept the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, 
then you will repent of your sins. Yeah. You will be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will cry out to the Lord until he fill your soul with his spirit. <clears throat> That's where salvation comes. Even baptism, without the proper understanding of what baptism is for and what it represents, baptism is no good. Thank you. you know, that's why I take my time with baptizing folks. You know, uh, 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 there are preachers out there who get excited, and, you know, and just, just throw people in water. No, you need to understand what you're doing. Amen. So the Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So there's nothing we've done or can do to deserve salvation. <clears throat> At verse 9, now it says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. So what are, we, what are you bragging about? What are you bragging about? And, and particularly folks that are in, in, you know, in that fly under the uh, so-called the holiness umbrella, you, you, you got to be really careful because I've met just some downright arrogant folk mm -hmm. in, in my life time. Yeah. Oh, bless God, I, I, I don't do that. And, and I, I don't do this and the, the other. Looking down on people. But you have no room to look down on nobody. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody in here is an ex-something. You might, you might not have did what I did. I might not have did what you did, but I was still outside the will of God. I was still worthy of damnation and hell. And so were you. <laughs> not of works, lest any man should boast. So what are you bragging about? Verse 10 now, the Bible says, For we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his, it's, it's, it's the spirit. You know, sometimes we're saying that song, it's the spirit that makes the difference. <coughs> okay, go now to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Amen, amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we'll pick it up at verse uh, 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we'll begin reading at verse 20. Amen, amen. All right. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and at verse 20, the word of God says, For there is not a just man upon the earth. There is not a just man upon the earth. So, so that ought to knock you off your high horse because you were included in that. There's not a just man upon the earth. <clears throat> There's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. <clears throat> you know, so, so, uh, now we just read, let's, then you, you shouldn't be boastful because you're not just of your own. It is Jesus Christ that makes us just. Yeah. <laughs> okay. At verse 21, also take no heed unto all the words that are spoken. Lest thou hear thy servants curse thee. Watch this at verse 22 now. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise have cursed others. You know within yourself. You know that you 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 short. You come up short. You just have to be honest. Be honest with yourself. You know you're not all that. But yet you have some folk run around here, uh, you know, holier than thou. You know, Want to look down on people. That is not the reason why, that's not why God saved us to look down on people. Amen. Now, yes, we believe and preach holiness. You, we believe in holiness. We believe in sanctification. But understand that the deeds in and of itself, is that there's no salvation in those deeds. And I, th I think that's where a, a, a lot of times how, uh, uh, you know, holiness got such a bad rap because all of, you know, a lot of times, the, the old times, they preach rules. 
I mean, they wanted folk, no sooner you, you darkened the door, they, they wanted you to change instantly. But not, not understanding that it, something got to get in you. You need, it's something, it, it, something has to take place on the inside. You could dress, you know, they, they, they were so concerned about how folk look. To all you, you what you had was a bunch of dressed up devils. Mm -hmm. But now, if, if I can get something in you, if the word gets in you, and if it take root, then, then the outside gonna follow. So now it says, for oftentimes also thine own heart knows that thou thyself likewise have cursed others. You know within yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. It is by grace that we are saved. And not of works. It's nothing that you've done. <clears throat> okay, all right. Go now to uh, Psalms, the 130th division of Psalms. Psalms 130. Amen, amen. We have to fight this this uh, temptation to, to be out, to think that, that you're all that. You know, <clears throat> Psalms 130, we'll start reading at verse 1. Psalms 130 and at verse 1, and the word of God says, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Okay, we'll look at verse 3. Now watch this. This is what I want you to get here. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who should stand? Who would be able to stand? If, the, if God counted every little thing we did, no, none of us would be standing. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who would stand? Who would be able to stand? Because what you don't realize, the Bible says the thought of foolishness is sin. And 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 you 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 got some thoughts. You may not have said it. You may not have did it, but you thought it. You thought it, and the, and the thought of foolishness is sin. That's why you better thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, all right. I'll go, go now to Luke. Luke, the gospel according to Luke, chapter uh, 18. Amen, amen. By grace are you saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, and uh, uh, we'll pick it up at verse 9. You know, some people just uh, uh, um, uh, with with their they, they have a, a what I call a Pharisee spirit, you know, and and they can really just look down on people and make people feel so condemned. You know. But no, no. Now we we gonna preach the gospel now, and if the gospel offend you, I I, I don't apologize for that. And, you know. But we ought to people. We want to want people ought to feel welcome here. We want you to feel welcome. But now and then, let the word do its job. <clears throat> let the you know let the word do its job. If the word cleans you up, then you're gonna be clean. <clears throat> Luke chapter eighteen. <clears throat> And we begin reading at verse 9. Luke chapter 18 and at verse 9. And the word of God says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Wow. wow. He spoke this parable mm -hmm. to certain which trusted in themselves that they were right. They thought they had it all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They thought they were all that. Yeah. Which trusted in themselves that they were righteous 
and despise others. They thought they were all that and they were looking down on other people. And that spirit is amongst, I mean, it, it, it's real thick amongst the so-called apostolic or apostolic faith folks. Oh my gosh. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> they trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. They looked down on other people. At verse 10 now, and the Bible says two men went into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican, the, a Pharisee. And that Pharisee experience is alive and well. Verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Look at look at him now. I think he, that I, not that you made you, now he said I. Like he did something. Look, look at it. verse 12. I fast twice a week, twice in the week. I give tithe of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He 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 realized that. I'm in the sight of God, I'm nothing. He realized that in the sight, in the, in the coming to the presence of God, I got to humble myself. But now the contrast that to the, 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 the Pharisee who was just arrogant and proud. I, I, I. But here this fellow, the, 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 the publican, he wouldn't even look up into hell. He, he bowed down his head. That's a sign of, of respect. That's a sign of submission. That's a sign of humbleness. And he said, I, I, need, I need you, God. But now, if you look at what the Pharisee prayed, he, he, didn't, he didn't give God any reverence. It was all about me. And you, you go to some of these you, the so-called apostolic faith churches and listen at these folk testimony. Mm -hmm. I, 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 oh, bless God, I don't do this and I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I thank the Lord, I'm not like my family. Mm -hmm. How you going to draw your family? You, you downgrading. <clears throat> and the public is standing off then a fall would not lift so much his eyes into heaven, but smote unto his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Listen now, for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. <clears throat> Humbleness is the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, go to uh, Romans chapter 3 now. Romans chapter 3, amen, amen. By grace are ye saved. Romans chapter 3, we'll pick it up at verse 23. Chapter 3 and at verse 23. <clears throat> what God says, for all have sinned. Yeah. All have sinned. <clears throat> and, and, and you know, you let listen to some of these people, they tell you how old they were when they got saved. Mm -hmm. I got saved when I was 11 years old. 
for all have sinned. Tell you how long they've been saved. I've been saved 42 years. All have, don't matter how long you, you've been saved, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace. Being justified freely by his grace. <clears throat> being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. It took blood to redeem us. For the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death. So, so a payment had to be made for you and I. Yeah. And we could not make that payment. So God in his infinite wisdom sent his son. God manifested himself. To go to the cross of Calvary. To pay the price for us. Yes. Blood had to be shed. That's the only way our sins could be atoned for. It had to be some shedding of blood. <clears throat> Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. That's the only way we are here today. For God has sent forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sin that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. So look at verse 27 now. Where is the boasting then? So what are you bragging about? Um, you, you should be, if you, you made a change, you ought to be glad about it. You ought to be happy about that. But just understand that the change is because of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Where is the boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of what? Of works? What works? Nay or no. But by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith. Listen, listen. Without the deeds or the works of the law. It is the, my faith in Jesus Christ as to why I don't do what I used to do. It is my faith in Jesus Christ is why I do what I do. It's not, I, I'm not doing this of my own now. Okay, go to Isaiah now. Isaiah chapter 64. I'm getting ready to let you go. We're almost done. Isaiah chapter 64. Amen, amen. Isaiah chapter 64, and we'll pick it up at verse 6. Isaiah 64, and then verse 6, and the word of God says, But we are all as, un as an unclean thing. We are all as an unclean thing. Listen, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. All of our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we do all, and we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Our, our righteousness are as filthy rags. The only way the, uh, the Father... Uh, the Lord Jesus can, 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 God can view us as righteous is through the lens of Jesus Christ. That's the only way he can view us as righteous. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
That's the only way we can be righteous. <clears throat> so, so there's no sense in, so how can you look down on somebody else? And all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Verse 7, And there is none that calleth upon thy name that stirred up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. God is too holy, so, so uh, 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 we can't stand before God. But now, O Lord, thou art our father, and we art the clay, and thou art the potter, and we are all the work of thy hand. That's what makes us right. We have to, we have to surrender our will. We have to surrender our way and allow God to mold us and to shape us into what he wants us to be. That's what makes us right. <clears throat> okay, all right. Go now to First Peter. First Peter, the first epistle of Peter, chapter three. Amen. Amen. First Peter, chapter three. We'll pick it up at verse eighteen. First Peter chapter three and in verse eighteen. And word of God says, For Christ, for Christ also hath once suffered for sin. The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went to the prisons, went and preached into the spirits in prisons, which sometimes were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was prepared, wherein few that its eight souls were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Listen now. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. Listen, listen. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is nothing that we've done. By the res resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of, of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Amen, amen. Okay, okay, go back to Ephesians chapter 2 here. Ephesians chapter 2. I just want us to be careful that we don't go around, you know, nose all in the air looking down on people. We're here, but by the grace of God. I heard David say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where, you know, where would I be? I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for the Lord. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, we'll start at verse 1 now. Ephesians chapter 2 and at verse 1, all right? And the word of God says, and you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespass and sin. You hath he quickened who were dead in trespass and sin. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world. In times past, you walked according to the course of this world. There was a time when you did what you wanted to do. There was a time when you 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 disobeyed. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, and we, we had that spirit in us too. That spirit was in you. Yes, it was. Yeah. Thank you. 
among whom also we all, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. Now again, some of us may not have gone as far as others, but it didn't matter. We all had a conversation with it. Listen now, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. By nature, we came here programmed outside of the will of God. David said, he, I was shaping in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. <clears throat> but God, verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ he, he quickened us together with Christ. When, when Jesus went down and he was resurrected, he resurrected us with him. He resurrected us with him. When Jesus got up, I got up too. Even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ by grace are ye saved? Hallelujah. By grace are you saved now. It's the grace of God. Okay, okay. Go to Philippians now, chapter 3. We can read let you go. This will be our last scripture, I believe. Philippians chapter 3. Amen, amen. Philippians chapter 3. We'll pick it up at verse uh, number 4. Philippians chapter 3. And at verse 4, by grace are ye saved. Philippians chapter 3, and at verse 4, the word of God says, Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, Paul is giving his credentials according to the flesh. But watch what he says here now. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But look, watch this now. Look at what, how he thinks about this. But what things were gained to me, those I count, for, those I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, the loss of all things, and do count them but dung. All of that we just read about, all of the Hebrew of the Hebrews and the Pharisees, he said, I count it as dung. That I may win Christ. Watch this. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Not having my own righteousness. I don't want my own righteousness. I want the righteousness of Jesus. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's the only way we're going to be resurrected is through the power of Jesus Christ. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. That's what this is all about. That I might attain the resurrection of the dead. By grace are ye saved. Amen, amen. We'll leave it right there. We thank God for you. Thank God for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus. I hope I said something to help somebody. Praise the Lord.